Anthony and Nathaniel Cook wrote one of the most terrifying chapters in Toledo history. The sibling serial killers have both been in prison for years, but they will both be up for parole. We got a tremendous reaction from you about this story, and so many of you, our viewers, want to know how this is possible. 13 ABC's Lisa Guyton on the story for weeks, since tonight she introduces you to more people who are connected by the tragedy of the Cook brothers. Lisa. Well, Lee Anthony is up for parole this month, Nathaniel in 2018. Tonight we introduce you to a man who has devoted decades of his life to this case, as well as family and friends of Connie Sue Thompson, who have never publicly talked about their private pain inflicted by the Cook brothers. For like her first car. Some of the pictures of Connie Sue Thompson are beginning to fade, but the memory of her is still so vivid for family and friends. It took so much from the Thompson family that they all were so devastated and heartbroken over this because she was their shining star. She was the apple of their eye. Deanna Thompson never had a chance to meet her husband's sister, Connie Sue, but she's on the front lines of the fight to keep the Cook brothers behind bars. You go on with your daily life, you know, and all of a sudden all these old horrible feelings come up that, you know, you have to deal with. Deanna's written a letter to the parole board for Anthony's hearing. And we understand the fact that there was no life without parole and no, no death penalty at the time, but uh, he definitely needs to stay right where he is. Connie Nadeau was named after her aunt Connie Sue. I never got to meet her, but she is still has a big place in my heart. Juanita Roscoe is a childhood friend of Connie Sue's and has two daughters, including Connie, with Connie Sue's brother. A whole community, even now, the whole community has come together to um, really kind of be her voice. We know that the chances of Anthony getting out are slim, but we also know that the chances of Nathaniel getting out, who was part of Connie's murder, um, brutal murder, we do know that the chances of him getting out are more than great. And that's what we want to stop. Frank Stiles first worked the case with the Toledo Police Department and later the cold case squad. He says he knew the series of murders in the early 1980s were connected. He didn't know who was behind the brutal killings until they arrested Anthony Cook in 1981 for the murder of Peter Sawicki. Finally got the leads, finally got the breaks, finally was able to put the cuffs on him. And that was the greatest day of my life. But it was nearly 20 years before DNA and new forensic evidence helped investigators connect the Cook brothers to other murders. Anthony confessed to nine, Nathaniel admitted to three. Stiles spent hours questioning Anthony, who he says seemed to enjoy talking about what he did. I mean, I've talked to a lot of bad guys in my life. I've been shot at, beat up, whatever. But nobody like this man. We got him. Let's keep him. Don't ever let him out. Let God deal with him. And while most believe the parole hearing for Anthony will amount to nothing, Nathaniel's plea deal means he will get out of prison after serving 20 years. Believe me, when he walks out that door, he will never be without friends on the police department. They will keep an eye on him. Frank Stiles has written a book about the cooks called Evil Brothers. Get connected to 13abc.com to learn more about it. Now, there will be a vigil in honor of all of the Cook Brothers victims on February 21st at Jesu Catholic Church. The Mass is set for four and everyone is welcome. Anthony's hearing is scheduled for February 23rd or 24th. If you'd like to write a letter or send an email to the Parole Board, we have all that information posted at 13abc.com. Reporting live, Lisa Guyton, 13ABC, Action News.